Accessing the Project Story Mapping Board Basically, there are two ways to access a Project Story Mapping Board. We can either get to it directly through the plugin main page or from the project itself. Go to Apps Story Map. On the app main page, click Projects on the right. Find your project and access its story mapping board. As mentioned, you can also access this board directly via the project. On the menu, click on Projects and then View All Projects. Search for your project by name. On the left list view, click on the Story Map. It'll take you to the exact story mapping board previously shown to you. On the Project Story Mapping Board, there are three modes – Release, Sprint and No Swim Lane. They look similar but have different purposes. Click the ellipsis button on the top left corner and choose the mode you want to view. Release mode is normally used on a Kanban project. For Scrum projects, Sprint is preferred. By default, these modes are not enabled completely. At first, either Release or Sprint is available. It depends on which type of project it is. Nonetheless, users can easily change their view mode by adjusting the setting. The last mode, No Swim Lane, is for projects belonging to neither of the previously mentioned project types. Let's start with going back to Release Mode. As you can see, on this board, there are cards which are categorized into three main groups. Goal is the first level, Epic the second level, and Stories are the last. To add more goals, click the plus symbol. I'll create one and name it Demo Goal. Then create two epics under it. I'll name them Demo Epic 1 and Demo Epic 2. There are releases available here already, so I'll pick one and add tasks to it. Now we have Demo Task 1 and 2. There is no limit to how many releases or sprints a user can create. To create one, hover your mouse cursor on this section. When you see a tooltip appear, click on it to open the modal. Fill in the necessary details and click Save. A new release has been created. Easy, isn't it? If you ever create an item and something is incorrect, you can come back and change it any time. For example, change titles, colors, attach personas, change critical levels, statuses of issues, end date of releases, etc. Let's open the Goal Detail modal. You may see that the title and status can also be changed here. Moreover, users can designate who is the leader, set related labels, members, personas, and a start-end date. Similarly, we can also edit epics in the same manner. Change critical level. Change status. Change color. Change assignee. You can choose to either use a color fill or not. Let's open the editor. Change the name again. I'll write a comment here. Of course, you can come back and edit or delete it later. Change the assignee. Add a label. And let's create this to do. Fill in a start date. Now let's drag some cards from other releases to our newly created release and try editing some details directly. For example, the title, critical level, and story points. Change the status to in progress. Assign it to a member and change the color. What about the release details? 
all information related to a release can also be updated. On the release bar, only the name and the end date can be changed. To update more info, you need to open the editor. Let's populate our newest release with more cards. Surrounding cards are visible on the board because they are either under an epic or in a release. In other words, not all tickets are available here to be moved. For those hidden, you might want to check the issue box. Here you can find tickets which have no goals and aren't planned for any releases. Drag them from this list into the desired position. They'll be fixed right into place. After a while, your board will be full of cards. When that happens, it may be hard to find cards you're working on. One way to help clarify the view is by collapsing goals. To do that, just click on the arrow symbol here and choose which goals to keep on the board. A number appears on the second and third levels to indicate the number of cards inside each level. Another way to reduce the number of visible cards is by using a goal filter. You'll then be able to see all goals in a list. Just pick the ones you want or none at all. And search for the goal you want to keep in this search box. You can do the same with swim lanes. Choose your desired release to display and use the search feature. Another useful feature is the Quick Filter. It allows the user to take advantage of JQL, the most powerful and flexible way to search for your issue in JIRA. Let's create a new filter with the JQL syntax, status equals done. Then click on it. Now only done tickets are visible. This is only a simple JQL. You can create more complex JQL queries to help you with any sorting problems. Now let's walk through the toolbar functions. The first one is the full screen feature. Full screen helps users have a larger view of the board and omits the unnecessary menu bar at the top. The horizontal mode gives users a horizontal view of the board. Similar to the common view, you can also drag releases, cards, and so on. Another important feature is the jump search. Just simply click the magnifier symbol to open the side panel. For example, I'll type in Demo Task and press Enter. Now you'll find cards that are highlighted with glowing frames. Nice, right? Users can also search for cards with advanced options like Assignee, Status, and Issue Type. As mentioned before, we also have personas which give life to the stories, understanding and usage of the situations for newbies. For that reason, we reserve this button here for users to create personas. Users can create local personas which only exist inside the current board or create global personas which exist on all boards created. And the search box helps you find persona faster. Next is the export feature. 
This gives users either a still overview or a spreadsheet file. With these, you can save the current view of the board and use it as shared material without having to reload the board. Public sharing allows you to share an actual view of the board instead of a still image of it. Let's take a look at it. The shared board provides users a more interactive view. On it, users can search for cards, view them in a horizontal order, in different modes, etc. There are also some settings which are similar to the ones on the actual board. Let's go back to our board. Next to the share button is the comment feature. With it, you can leave comments or notes. It's trivial, but can come in handy in some cases. Another useful feature is the activities log. Almost every activity made on the board will be recorded here. Board leaders can easily track the changes, updates done by himself or others. It operates like a common notification box. Switch this on to see only new notifications, or off to see the whole section. The last one here is settings. There are some basic settings as mentioned in the shared board. Let's go through all of them. Show completed cards or show cards with the status done. Pay attention to done cards. Next is to show orphan cards. Show orphan cards means it shows cards on other columns. When turning this option off, they'll be hidden away. And the third option is Show Completed Release. But first, let me release this demo release. After releasing, a green flag with the text Released appears on the release bar. The Show Completed Release option is similar to the first option. It'll hide away the completed release when off. You can also use an epic color fill, show personas, new GUI, and swim lane modes. Here is the help section, which contains useful links when you need instructions. Lastly, let's not forget the go to admin settings here. It's the most important setting on the story mapping board. On the board tab, the first two options are for modes. With these turned on, all view modes are available on the board. And for the third, enable Confluence integration. If it's on, users can integrate the board onto a Confluence page via a macro. Let's do an example. Next is Enable Public Sharing. As mentioned before, it provides us a URL to this board. When it's off, the Public Sharing feature is disabled. By default, the plugin only allows users to have a maximum of 1,000 stories on the board, but it's adjustable. Here, I set it to be 2,000. And the last option will either prevent users from editing a started sprint or allowing it. Let's see how it works on the roadmap. 
Change the view mode to Sprint. Open the roadmap. You can see that I can drag the first sprint around and change the star end date, right? Okay, now let's turn the setting off and save it. It's no longer possible to adjust the dates of the sprint bar now. Show Story Media. When we attach an image or put it in the description section, it is visible on the card if this setting is on. However, after turning it off, all media means will be hidden. Show Story Subtask. If there are any subtasks inside a task, they're visible. Turning this off will hide them from sight. The last card setting is used to show information fields on each card. Status. Assignee. Story points, priority, labels. Next is field settings. The first one is use JIRA rank. With this, all cards will be ranked by the JIRA rank system. And we also support mapping roadmap dates with JIRA fields. This option isn't enabled from the beginning. Enabling this feature means that all cards created further on will use JIRA date fields. For old dates, we provide a way to migrate them. Okay, now we'll move on to roadmaps. Basically, roadmaps and story maps have the same toolbar. The main difference here is the Gantt chart on which a user can view planned tasks against the timeline. It's a more intuitive way to view the schedule and track progress as well as deadlines. In the first mode, all cards are arranged in order of hierarchy, goal, epic, story. On the other hand, in the second mode, cards are put under releases. Therefore, their positions are based on the order of releases. Regardless of the view mode, the Gantt chart lets users create milestones. Just hover your mouse cursor over the top of the Gantt chart. When you see a rhombus, click on it and a modal appears. Fill in all the fields and click Create. If you want to edit or delete it, double click on it to open the modal and insert the changes or simply click the Delete button at the bottom. For goals, epics and stories, to plan one, just click the Gantt chart at the same rows of issues in the list view. Bars will be created for you. You can also link them. The default length is one day, but you can drag it sideways to extend it. Change the color. To edit them or delete them, just right-click on the bar and choose Clear Plan. While planning tasks on a Gantt chart, it sometimes becomes a hassle when we need to slide forward and backward along the timeline. That's why we have the Today button and Time Scale options. Up until now, I've shown you the story mapping board of a single project. However, our plugin also supports agile boards. It has the same features as project story mapping boards and roadmap, but works with multiple projects. You can either open one via boards,
or by the main page of the story map. Aside from story mapping boards, we also provide users a more flexible feature called Portfolio Board. It supports multiple projects like Agile Boards. However, instead of fixed issue types, the Portfolio Board gives users a wider range of choices. Users can freely choose to map each level to specific issue types. To access it, go to App, Story Map. Click Create. Choose the Story Map template. Here, I'll choose a three-level template. Fill in the required details and then the setting permission to determine who can access the board and with which permissions. The first level will be loaded automatically. As for the second and third level, only mapped issue types are allowed. Users can either create new cards or drag them from issue boxes to a portfolio board. We also support multiple themes to suit our users' needs.